My name is Akila Pavlad. I'm a research scientist and emeritus research scientist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's laboratory in Albany, California. Today, we were trying to uh, show the science fair winners, uh, students, what does uh, chemistry, what does science is doing for them, and I uh, encourage them to uh, continue their interest in science because unfortunately today many of them are not uh, finding enough interest in science and we need scientists there. The future of uh, the U.S. economy is dependent on that we have an, uh, enough no number of scientists who are developing new methods, new industrial ways. My name is Brooke Wenig. I go to Tamil Pius High and I tested the effective temperature on the sucrose content of grapes and I found that if grapes are exposed to higher temperatures then their sucrose levels increase and my reason for that is because as temperature increases ethylene gas production increases and as a result of the ethylene gas production increasing more enzymes are created which convert the starches into sugars and therefore having a higher sucrose percentage and I also found that green grapes tend to have a lower sucrose content than red grapes and also that organic grapes had a higher sucrose content and a higher standi standard deviation than non-organic grapes and my explanation for that is the companies that use pesticides they want all the grapes to be standard they don't want much of a fluctuation between them so that's why they had more of a constant sucrose level than the organic grapes and I figured this information would be very useful for diabetics because they can know the relative amounts of sucrose in their grapes or other fruits. Um, it's a tough decision if you're diabetic to go for non-organic versus organic. Organic ch generally tends to be healthier for you because it has a higher nutritional content, but if you're very worried about your sucrose levels or your sugar levels in general, uh, you could go non-organic, but if the, the difference between refrigerated and room temperature is very small in some of the grapes, such as uh, 0.04 in the, some of the non-organics or 0.06. And so um, some of them wouldn't make much of a difference, but I think that companies should try to all go organic because it's just better for your health. It, it has better nutrition. It's better for the environment. You're not polluting. You're not contaminating the water supply. You're not creating all this runoff. And it's better just to go local, sustainable, and organic. Hi, I'm Caroline Ho. I am 12 years old and I go to St. Matthew. My project was Natural and Effective Ant Repellents. The purpose of my project was to discover whether cinnamon, black pepper, blue cheese, or horseradish was a better ant repellent. Natural ant repellents are less hazardous to health and the environment. And so children would not be as affected by it. And they would not get, they usually wouldn't get any allergic reactions. I'm Tushar. Um, I go to ACLC. I'm in going to 10th grade. I built a machine uh, which that, that um, it, it uh, measures the concentration of blue dye in a substance. I shined a LED light through um, I shined a LED light through an orange filter into a blue solution and there's a photoresistor that detects how much light passes through by uh, graphing the eight different solutions which I knew the concentration I got a reference graph here in which I can just put in a Gatorade or a Powerade uh, something that has a concentration that I don't know when I, when I find the resistance I can just go across the graph and then I can find the concentration Hello my name is Matthew Wong and I'm 11 years old and I go to Hilldale School in Daly City and my project the project was, um, I was trying to see if winglets increase stability, it's called searching for stability, and um, I was trying to see if 90 of you winglets, which are here, I wanted to see if they increase the stability of an airplane, and I thought that 90 of you winglets would increase stability the most. So I constructed a wind tunnel, and I tested for three different things, which is roll, pitch, and drag. Um, that roll is this movement, pitch is this movement, and um, drag is this movement.
with which, um, and drag was what wingnuts were originally designed to reduce. So um, I tested and overall I found that winglets do increase stability, but um, the nine group winglets, which I had originally thought would increase stability the most, um, I found that all the planes of winglets kind of equally increase stability. So the second part of my question was um, a little bit inconclusive. Because they do increase um, or decrease drag actually, they improve fuel efficiency. So what that does is you can use less fossil fuels, means less carbon pounds, and just much better for the world. Uh, hi, I'm Richard Hewen. I'm the father of Brian. Uh, my son um, has a chance to uh, take part in the Bay Area Science Fair this summer. And uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, able to uh, get in the second place, and we are very proud of uh, his work. And uh, it's really nice to have a chance to come here to uh, meet all these, uh, you know, talented young uh, scientists in the future. And I think we learn a lot, you know, just by uh, taking part in the science fair and uh, you know going to the uh, different area of uh, exhibits. It really helps. The, uh Nucleus of uh, the economy is new development. Other, other countries are developing them faster and uh, we are uh, importing from there. We ought to have uh, the situation that uh, we have local uh, developments and uh, uh, we are improving the economy. I have been in uh, science for 58 years. 43 of it was spent here at the laboratory. I have seen developments uh, in a number of ways. Uh, uh, some of it uh, was already commercialized, some of the others are uh, in the process of being commercialized. But this is what the department is doing. We are trying to develop research which has commercial application and in this way we are helping the U.S. economy. What you are going to see, this is actually a flower, enriched flower. And uh, what is, what I'm going to do, I already measured the result, what your grandmother did, added water, so let's add some water. I have to stir it, see whether it's getting the right consistency. You and then we are going to knead it. Uh, our grandmothers were very strong. As I said, normally I would be doing it more, much more scientifically, slowly. I put another plate on this, and instead of putting it in the oven, I put it in this press which is heated and if everything went all right and since this is 110 degrees if everything went well we should have the same type of What you are going to get? A film. Uh, naturally, since it's all done very rapidly, uh, it will be uh, not the same as this uh, saran or other material what you use uh, in your household, but that would be similar, that would be the utilization. Food of. Just to show you that. Uh, is that we want to develop this into a packaging film, same as a saran, polyethylene, or uh, other, for two reasons. One is presently they use uh, the polyethylene, but that's coming up from oil. And uh, two, uh, if we can use flour, 
wheel of wheat is a, a surplus material we could use. In this way, we would have a double ad advantage. We both have uh, less oil used for this purpose and uh, agricultural material. Now, one other thing, which is the, the title actually of this project, this material, since it's made out of flour, you can bury it in the ground and uh, in a day or two it will disappear. Polyethylene will stay there for 200 years. So the title of this project is Biodegradable Films and we can make it in various shapes. I really am here to congratulate you. Your posters are tremendous. Your efforts were tremendous. Um, I started out as a scientist very much uh, doing a science fair project in seventh grade and got really excited by it. So there is a future to it. And every one of those shows thought and are tremendous. So I really congratulate yourself. I'm going to congratulate you. Now. Congratulate yourself. Really well done. Um, and so we, we have a little bit of recognition, but recognize the work. Now, there's a couple reasons why we're excited about the fact that you gave your efforts to science and gave such good results. First of all, you hope you learn something now. It might um, help in your future education. So I took it to university level, studied engineering and science, and eventually got a PhD. And even if it's not your career goal to be a scientist, the world is more and more complex. So just understanding some of the issues you address is going to be important for your future. Even as simple as what you buy at the supermarket. Is it worth going out and buying organic grapes versus just regular old grapes? Or where are we going to get our alternative fuels? Um, you know, there's an oil spill out. So just what you buy, who you vote for later, is all dictated by more and more complex issues. And we hope that your scientific knowledge will give you the best head start on that. So again, thank you for taking the time to do a great job here. Um, on behalf of the Western Regional Research Center, we, we thank you for coming here. We also thank the organizers for this. And I, I guess there are a lot of people who have helped put this science fair together, and I thank them all, especially Dr. Pavla. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, the first one is uh, Connor Bennett for biometric wa water striders testing the load bearing capacity of static wider samples. We need a proper photo. <laughs> Thank you so much to the USDA for supporting young scientists in the Bay Area. So if you are interested in science or if you have a child who is interested in science, be sure that uh, you encourage him or her to be involved in science because science is a very important thing. It's the basis of our whole economy. So hopefully uh, uh, we are going to uh, see some of these students next year here and perhaps uh, in a few more years when they finish their uh, college studies they are going to be here and taking it over from uh, us older scientists uh, so we'll have younger uh, su supply. Nice to have uh, uh, seen you and we look forward to see you.